Shalom, Chavarim. Here we go. We're going to finish up our study in Zechariah with uh, chapters 11, 12, 13, and 14. And uh, we're also going to visit some uh, pretty intense prophecies. And, uh, you know, I'd like to point out um, you know, this book is the only book in all of history that um, foretells all the events of mankind from beginning to end. And uh, if I remember right, I think it's three quarters of the book is all prophecy. And the prophecies in the Father's Word, they're, they're always so accurate. It's um, absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, it makes me wonder um, why people don't get a lot more excited about the book than they do. Anyway, um, chapter 11. Open your doors, O Lebanon, and let fire devour your cedars. Howl, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen, because the mighty are ravaged. Howl, O oaks of Bashan, for the dense forest has come down. Listen, the howling of shepherds, for their splendor is ravaged. Listen, the roaring of lions, for the pride of the Yardane is ravaged. Thus said Yahweh, my Elohim, feed the flock for slaughter, whose owners slaughter them and feel no guilt, and their sellers say, Baruch be Yahweh, for I have become rich and their own shepherds do not spare them. For I shall no longer spare the inhabitants of the land, declares Yahweh. But see, I am delivering up mankind, each one into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his sovereign, and they shall crush the earth. But I do not deliver from their hand. So I shepherded the flock meant for slaughter, the truly poor of the flock. And I took for myself two staffs, the one I called pleasantness, and the other I called unity, and I shepherded the flock. Then I sent off the three shepherds in one month, for my being despised them, and their being also loathed me. So I said, I am not shepherding you. Let the dying die, and let the straying stray, and let those who are left eat each other's flesh. And I took my staff, pleasantness, and cut it in two to break the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. So it was broken on that day. And the poor of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of Yahweh. And I said to them, if it is good in your eyes, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages thirty pieces of silver. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> well, I'll get back to that. And Yahweh said to me, Throw it to the potter. The splendid price at which I was valued by them, and I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of Yahweh for the potter. Then I cut in two my other staff, unity, to break the brotherhood between Yahudah and Yisrael. And Yahweh said to me, Take again the implements of a foolish shepherd, for look, I am raising up a shepherd in the land who does not visit those straying, nor seek the young, nor heal those that are broken, nor feed those that still stand, but he eats the flesh of the fat and tears off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd forsaking the flock! 
Let a sword be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall wither and his right eye shall be dimmed. You know, in verse 10, um, it says, I took my staff pleasantness and cut it in two to break the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. Um, this could be tying in with the seven-year peace treaty, which is mentioned in Daniel uh, chapter 9, uh, the uh, so-called Antichrist, more accurately referred to as the lawless one. Uh, he, makes, uh, he doesn't make a peace treaty. He strengthens an existing pre peace treaty with many. And um, in the middle of the week, in the middle of the 70th week of Daniel, uh, if you want to know more about that, check out my study on Revelation, uh, the first uh, video, first video or two. Um, in the middle of the week, he, uh, he breaks this uh, covenant, the peace treaty. And also, you know, Revelation, the, uh, the uh, rider on the white horse, chapter 6, I think, uh, he carries a bow. That word bow is the same word uh, that we see in Genesis for rainbow. It's, it's not a bow like bow and arrow. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, a covenant, it, the peace treaty, again. Um, in verse 12, we uh, see, And I said to them, If it is good in your eyes, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out uh, for my wages 30 pieces of silver, of course. Um, Zechariah here is acting out uh, the role of Judas and um, of course that and what follows is a prophecy about uh, Judas and of course um, in verse 17 the worthless shepherd uh, that word there uh, also refers to an idle or a vain shepherd who really feeds on the sheep um, this is the beast, 666, Revelation uh, 13, and uh, specifically Revelation 13, verse 3. Um, that's, the, uh, that's the Antichrist there. Okay, chapter 12, the message of the word of Yahweh against Yisrael. Yahweh stretching out the Shamaim and laying the foundation of the earth and forming the spirit of man within him declares, See, I am making Yerushalayim a cup of reeling to all the people all around and also against Yahudah. It is in the siege against Yerushalayim. And in that day it shall be that I make Yerushalayim a very heavy stone for all peoples. All lifting it are severely injured. And all the nations of the earth shall be gathered against it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 38. Um, <laughs> look at the news. Presently, I mean for quite a few years now. Um, everybody's wondering about... Israel, Yisrael. Verse 4, In that day, declares Yahweh, I smite every horse with bewilderment and its rider with madness, and on the house of Yahudah I open my eyes, but every horse of the peoples I smite with blindness, and the leaders of Yahudah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Yerushalayim are a strength to me through Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. In that day I make the leaders of Yahudah like a fire pot among trees, and like a torch of fire in the sheaves, and they shall consume all the peoples all around, on the right and on the left, and Yerushalayim shall dwell again in her own place in Yerushalayim. And Yahweh shall save the tents of Yahudah first so that the comeliness of the house of David and the comeliness of the inhabitants of Yerushalayim would not become greater than that of Yahudah. 
In that day, Yahweh shall shield the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, and the feeble among them in that day shall be like Dawid, David, and the house of Dawid like Elohim, like the messenger of Yahweh before them. And it shall be in that day that I seek to destroy all the Gentiles that come against Yerushalayim. And I shall pour on the house of Dawid and on the inhabitants of Yerushalayim a spirit of favor and prayers, and they shall look upon even whom they pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. That, <laughs> that verse was written 800 years B B.C. Crucifixions never occurred until 700 years after this writing. Um, they shall look upon even whom they pierced. Nobody, you know, knew what that meant when this was written. 700 years later, they understood it. Crucifixion. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And they shall be in bitterness over him as a bitterness over the firstborn. In that day, the mourning in Yerushalayim is going to be great. Like the mourning at Hadad Rimon in the valley of Mechidon. And the land shall mourn, every clan by itself, the clan of the house of Dawid by itself, and their women by themselves, the clan of the house of Nathan by itself, and their women by themselves, the clan of the house of Lewi by itself, and their women by themselves, the clan of Shimmi by itself, and their women by themselves, all the rest of the clans, every clan by itself, and their women by themselves. You know, in, in verse 6, um, in that day I make the leaders of Yahudah like a fire pot among trees, trees, and like a torch of fire in the sheaves. The sheaves would be the, the represent the twelve tribes and um, uh, Joseph's dream uh, back in uh, better sheet Genesis uh, thirty-seven five. Uh, Joseph's dream relates to this. And it, again in verse 10 where it says, they shall look upon even whom they pierced. Um, right there, looking upon even whom, in the original Hebrew, you have the Aleph and the Tab uh, right there. Uh, in the original uh, Hebrew, symbols, those symbols are seen there. The Aleph and the Tab, um, they're just inserted there um, so that it reads, uh, they shall look upon the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tav, whom they pierced. Uh, <laughs> you only see that in the original Hebrew. And in verse 12, where it talks about the clan of the house of uh, Nathan, I should say Nathan, that marks the bloodline of uh, Mary, the mother of Yeshua. All right, chapter 13. In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of Dawid and for the inhabitants of Yerushalayim for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, that I shall cut off the names of the idols from the earth and they shall be remembered no more. And I shall also remove the prophets and the unclean spirit from the earth. The names of the idols, you know, the Father tells us when it comes to the names of these false mighty ones and idols, don't speak them. This is why, you know, we should not say G-O-D anymore. That is the name of an idol and of a false mighty one. It's even a short version of the name of Satan. Uh, we should not say J-E-S-U-S. -E that comes from the Greek. And it, and it means hail Zeus. Forgive me, Abba. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> you know. You know what I'm getting at. Uh, verse 3. And it shall be. 
when one Nava, again, prophet or prophesies, then his father and mother who brought him forth shall say to him, You shall not live because you have spoken falsehood in the name of Yahweh. And his father and mother who brought him forth shall pierce him through when he nava. And it shall be in that day that the Naviim shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he nava and not put a hairy robe on in order to deceive but shall say, I am no Navi, I am a farmer, for a man sold me as a slave in my youth. And one shall say to him, What are these wounds in your hands? And he shall say, Because I was wounded at home by those who love me. I'll get back to that. O oh, sword, awake against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, declares Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and let the sheep be scattered, but I shall turn my hand upon the little ones, and it shall be throughout all the land, declares Yahweh, that two-thirds therein are cut off and die, and one-third is left therein, and I shall bring the third into fire, and refine them as silver is refined, and try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I shall answer them. I shall say, This is my people, while they say, Yahweh is my Elohim. You know, I can't help it. I'm, you know, I keep thinking about um, verse uh, 2 in chapter 13 about the names and um, how the Father's name and the Son's name have been whew, so so destroyed and so ignored it. Look at Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 30, um, verse 4. Who has gone up to the Shamayim and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is the name of his bane his son if you know <laughs> did you ever read that one it's talking about the father the creator of the heavens of the shamayim and of the earth and it's asking what is his name and what is the name of his son if you know do you know the name of the Father and of His Son? I, so many people don't. I took a walk today and two young girls stopped me. They were Mormons and they says, uh, Do you love Jesus? I said, No. I says, But I love Yahshua. Do you know that name? And they said, No. Well, you know, I explained it to them. But, uh, I don't know if they had ears to hear or not, but I know this, that moment, there were angels standing there writing it down. That was a witness. And if they don't seek out his name, after I talked to them and instructed them, um, they'll be reminded. It's written down in a book in the Shamayim, and, and they'll be reminded. Then um, in, in verse 6, chapter 13, um, back in Zechariah, it's what I call a rice burner. <laughs> and one shall say to him, What are these wounds in your hands? You know, other Bibles, you know, they say your body. It's hands. What are these wounds in your hands? And he shall say, because I was wounded at the home, at home, by those who love me. This is Yeshua uh, talking. Um, you know, look at um, John chapter twenty, verse twenty-five, Matthew twenty-eight, seventeen. Um, he was wounded by Thomas's unbelief. 
he was wounded by his friends. Um, he was wounded at home by those who love him. Verse 9 uh, talks about bringing the third into fire and refining them as silver. That's, that's all about the uh, soon-to-come great tribulation on earth. Most importantly, um, again in verse 9, they shall call on my name. <laughs> this is Yisrael recognizing that Yeshua is indeed their Messiah. And I shall answer them, and I shall say, this is my people, while they say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Um, Yisrael recognizes Yeshua, and uh, then we have the uh, second coming. Then he returns. Chapter 14, see, a day shall come for Yahweh, and your spoil shall be divided in your midst, and I shall gather all the Gentiles to batter, battle against Yerushalayim, and the city shall be taken, the houses plundered, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into exile, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And Yahweh shall go forth, and he shall fight against those Gentiles as he fights in the day of battle. And again, as we're told in uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, the, everyone surrounds Israel, and no one comes to Israel's aid except Yahweh. And that's what we're seeing here. Verse 4, And in that day his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, which faces Yerushalayim on the east. And that's Yeshua, we know. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, it's also mentioned in Revelation, the greatest earthquake ever in the history of the planet. A very great valley and half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountain, for the valley of the mountains reaches to Atsai. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uziah. Sovereign of Yahudah, and Yahweh, my Elohim, shall come, all the Kodeshim with you. <laughs> Those who come with Yeshua on the white horses. Again, um, Revelation. <clears throat> Verse 6, And in that day it shall be, there is no light, it is dark, and it shall be one day which is known to Yahweh, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light. And in that day it shall be that living waters flow from Yerushalayim, half of them toward the eastern sea, and half of them toward the western sea in summer as well as in winter." And Yahweh shall be sovereign over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Yahweh and his name one. All the land shall be changed into a desert plain from Geva to Ramon, south of Yerushalayim. And she shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Binyamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate. And from the tower of Hanan. Hananiel, <laughs> to the wine presses of the sovereign. You think these names are easy? <laughs> and they shall dwell in her, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Yerushalayim shall be safely inhabited. And this is the plague with which Yahweh plagues all the people who fought against Yerushalayim. Their flesh shall, catch this one, their flesh shall decay while they stand on their feet, and their eyes decay in their sockets, and their tongues decay in their mouths. Now that, um, it could be something completely unknown right now, but that is the perfect description of a neutron bomb. Not uh, a nuke, but a neutron bomb which attacks protein. On the other hand, like I said, it could be something totally different. 
uh, verse 13, And it shall be in that day that a great confusion from Yahweh is among them, and every one of them shall seize the hand of his neighbor, and his hand rise up against his neighbor's hand. And Yahudah shall fight at Yerushalayim as well. And the wealth of all the Gentiles round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and garments in great quantities. So also is the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and on the donkey, and on all the cattle that are in those camps as this plague. And it shall be that all who are left from all the Gentiles which came up against Yerushalayim shall go up from year to year to bow themselves to the sovereign, Yahweh of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of Sukkoth. And it shall be that if any one of the clans of the earth does not come up to Yerushalayim to bow himself to the sovereign, Yahweh of hosts, on them there is to be no rain. And if the clan of Mitzrayim does not come up and enter in, then there is none. On them is the plague with which Yahweh plagues the Gentiles who do not come up to celebrate the festival of Sukkot. This is the punishment of Mitzrayim and the punishment of all the Gentiles that do not come up to observe the festival of Sukkot. In that day, Kodesh to Yahweh shall be engraved on the belts of the horses, and the pots in the house of Yahweh shall be like the bowls before the altar. And every pot in Yerushalayim and Yahudah shall be Kodesh to Yahweh of hosts. And all those who slaughter shall come and take them and cook in them. And there shall be, and there shall no longer be a merchant in the house of Yahweh of hosts in that day. And that, uh, that closes the book of Zechariah. Um... <laughs> Much uh, in this, this video, there's much uh, to do with the uh, book of Revelation. If you haven't watched my video, zzz, <laughs> I think there's over 20 of them on the book of uh, Revelation. Um, go ahead and dig in. And Yahweh's uh, Beracha on you. Shalom, my friends.